Hey guys and welcome back to my Solo Fighter Illusionist playthrough. We're going to be going back to the city in which we'll be doing mainly minor quests for a bit. And then we're going to head off to do the rest of the Slaver quest. So the first thing that I'm going to do is head to the government district and get Umar Hills on my map. I also considered buying the magic license for 5000 gold. But I kind of want to see if I can kill the cowled wizards later on because they do drop quite high level spell scrolls. And it's kind of unlikely that I'll need to cast very much around the city anyway. I'm there. I'm no use to anyone tired. I advanced this quest from the temple district at the same time. This is, quest is to basically get some molithium ore, which is another quest we can do in the bridge district eventually. The molithium ore you can use to upgrade one of the weapons you can get later on, which is probably a better usage of it than handing in this quest. So that's likely what I'll be doing. your service. The Adventure Mart's the finest shopping in all of Faerun. Widest selection, lowest prices, and nary a fancy illustration. Just the goods, bare and plain. Is it? I hope this is One of the things I take out my stash is the Arbane sword. Mainly because we're going to be fighting some enemies that can paralyze you and I don't have any other way of becoming immune to it. So the sword is pretty useful for that. Customer, a pearl to you. Greetings, good customer, a pearl to you. It's probably best left to me. 
I do spend the 15,000 to go into chapter 3 kind of early. The reason for that is that we're going to get two items that we can use. And we're going to have to pay the money eventually anyway, so I figured why not. Just so you be knowing, you be going to the Shadow Master Aaron Linvale. I hope this is worth it. I'll see to it. to it. Welcome to this right to the point, eh? I'm going to leave the story quest that uh, Aaron gives me here for a while, but he gives me the Amulet of Power and the Ring of Protection plus 2, so the Ring of Protection plus 2 is of course just a straight upgrade, and the Amulet of Power is something that will give me level drain immunity, which is of course very useful when I'm going to be fighting vampires. It's also worth noting that Daystar is going to be a better weapon for fighting vampires since they are undead and it will do double damage. I don't think you actually need that key after Galen gives it to you and go, you go down here. So I just stash it over there because I'm not sure if it's actually needed again. I don't believe it is. It kind of looks like there's repeated enemy encounters, like the same enemy groups, every so often. I'm not sure these are worth doing after a point because they don't give great experience, but I did at least get a scroll that I didn't know. Trust you'll be keeping your weapons at your sense of disgustingly sick person out there. One of the things I do immediately is I continue this quest from the temple area, but these guys are meant to have a scheduled fight and I basically just run away and let them finish it. It actually does take a while and you'll see all the upgrades in the uh, text box. I could have helped with that, but I figured I may as well go off and do other stuff at the same time. The first real encounter we're going to have here is the Skinner Murders quest. So I do use stone skin here because the enemies at the bottom floor are pretty annoying. But that's the reason I got the Sword of Agility is because there is gas that will put you in a health state. And I think they use one of the less common saves which is either breath weapon or death saving throws which mines aren't fantastic by this point. It is worth noting by this point with the Ring of Protection plus 2 and the Helm of Balderon. I have a 0 save versus spell and a, I think a negative 1 versus rod or wands. So the interesting part about saving throws is if you roll a 1 on the roll, 
that doesn't count as a critical failure. So if you have less than one as a saving throw, you won't actually fail the save. So that means you can be technically completely immune. The thing with that is, if you have a saving throw of zero, for example, and someone casts Domination on you, which has a negative two saving throw penalty, if you roll a one, then of course you're going to fail your save still. So it's still worth noting that saving throw penalties are going to be used by enemies. It does seem like this guy is always waiting outside the house, even though he's technically meant to be running away. But he'll drop the um, missile AC boots, which I don't have anything better, so that's what I use for now. And but if you notice by this point, the paladins have actually stopped fighting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rest in the inn until it's night time. You'll see the vampire encounter just appear out of nowhere. So we'll start seeing these encounters at night time. And if you're not aligned with these shadow thieves yet, then they shouldn't be attacking you. But since they are going to basically turn on me as soon as the NPCs are dead, I just go ahead and kill them before they can even do anything. This is why the level drain immune amulet is really nice by this point, because you don't need to use restoration after the fact. You, you wouldn't hurt a gnome, would you? Yeah, I'll see to it. What you're going to see me do is casting friends before I exit the house, because the cowled wizards don't care if you cast indoors. So this vendor will only be here at night, so keep that in mind. But he does sell really good spells. For example, improved haste, which I want. He also sells protection for magical weapons, which I also want, and spell immunity. Mainly it was for the spell immunity right now, but I decided to pick up a few of those other spells, including Improved Haste, which is going to be a very, very useful spell for us. The reason that we wanted spell immunity is we can get a free summon item here. 
but we need to have spell immunity because there's a maze trap on here. So immunity conjuration will allow us to basically become completely immune to it, but otherwise in single player that trap is a game over and you can't save against it. I, was the one who trusted you I decided to skip the cutscene there because it's related to Nira, who we don't really care about. One thing you're going to see me do incorrectly is leave the district before handing in the murders quest. But I come back to hand it in immediately after. We're mainly doing these quests in order to get some reputation, which will give us a discount because I do want to buy some expensive items soon. Good to see you. Some days, it's good to be a jerk. In the meantime, it looks like I I'm hooking this is worth it. Unless you happen to have a jade figurine of a horse and a saddle, that- Yeah, I'll see to it. Oh, it's you again. What is it? For the glory of all! I hope this is worth it. Is there something Handing in Neb's head to the government district also will get you 2500 and a reputation point, which is decent. Yeah, I'll see to it. It's done. I decide to stash everything that I don't need here because we're going to pick up some items we can sell. We're basically going to do the entire sewers and the slavers base now. It's fairly simple and straightforward so we could have done this earlier as well. If it must be done. These next enemies can be kind of annoying, but if you look in the logs you'll see that I save versus spell with a 1. So <laughs> I think I did mention that save versus spell for me currently was 0, but they literally cannot hit me with any spells that require a save. For save versus spell at least. Stuff like death and breath weapons still aren't very good for me. I think it's one of the trade-offs that you make as opposed to maybe playing as a berserker dual class is the Berserker will get enraged from level 1 and be able to become immune for a short period of time. But with a Gnome Fighter Illusionist it's like you have pretty great saves in some of the uh, saves that you can kind of use permanently.
If possible, I would try and go in the other entrance, if you can. Mainly because there is a little bit of a more difficult fight here for the start of the game, but it's nothing a few pre-buffs can't fix. I don't know if it's required to give the girl uh, 100 gold in order to get that reputation point, but I did it anyway. Also, yeah, don't get hit by that trap when you're trying to fight those guys. I decided to use Cloud Kill on these guys mainly because I haven't really been using it too much by this point. Chaos is another spell that I memorized and it is really good if you can use it because it does have a negative 4 penalty attached to it. But I end up not using it very much so far. This Gnome Wizard is especially annoying because he does have Skull Trap. Which he just did just hit me with and kill himself and his friend. It is a bit of a shame that we are missing Skull Trap as an always nest, but it shouldn't be the biggest loss in the world because AOE damage is generally not what we should be focusing on. Generally, we are kind of more fighter than mage, I would say. Some cheap beer for ya. I will always be grateful for your assistance. A 
I'll see to it. It's done. I decided to sell off Arbane's sword because we're going to get the Shield of Harmony pretty soon. And that will give us Charm, Confusion and Hold immunities. Plus the uh, Arbane sword does sell for 3000 so it is worth selling. We're going to make our first big purchase, which is the Robe of Vecna, which is widely considered to be one of the best items in the game. Mainly because it dramatically increases casting speed and will give you 10% magic resistance as well. So that was 14,000 in order to get that at 19 reputation and 20 charisma. I think I actually might bring the full plate mail into the area that I'm going to next, which is going to be the Druid Grove. Mainly because the trolls can hit you quite easily there and it might be better just to wear full armor you will find no better prices in our i guarantee it i also decide to upgrade the horn of valhalla so you get three versions of it and they give a level five a level seven and a level nine version of a berserker summon they're not that great but since it is a free summon i decide to go and get it anyway <laughs> 